Hey friend, my name is Emily Ann and this is the Sasser House. Today we are going to be making a highly, highly requested video. And I have been wanting to do this, but I was working on my crochet granny square dress that we posted just a little bit ago. You can check that out on the channel. Um, but I have got all my yarn, well not all my yarn, but a lot of my yarn out as you can see. I've got it all stacked up because I was picking and deciding on colors earlier this evening. And what we are going to make is a crocheted granny square cardigan. I made one of these cardigans a couple years back and it is by far my favorite piece of clothing in my closet. And I get so many compliments on this cardigan every single time I wear it out. And I think it's because it's really unique. Um, it's one of a kind, it's really bright and colorful and it always gets people's attention. Well, I get all kinds of comments um, on my socials about it as well. So I figured it was time to teach you how to make one. It's really not that hard. I'm gonna show you the squares that we're gonna be making. I'm gonna give you a look at the cardigan that I already have made that we are basing this tutorial off of. And then we're gonna get to crocheting. Before we get started, I wanna show you the original cardigan, the OG granny square cardigan. So I just made this up pretty much. Um, I didn't go off of a pattern or anything. I had seen some granny square cardigans a couple years back and I thought I want to make one, but I couldn't find a pattern. And so I just started making it. Um, but it's really simple. All you have to learn how to do is make the granny squares and then sew them together, which is really, really simple. And then if you want to add this, these cuffs and this edging, which I think definitely adds to the look. Um, but it's, it's really, really simple. Basically, we're gonna make two front panels. We're gonna make a larger back panel and then um, two panels for our sleeves and then we'll do the edging. If you're a first time crocheter, you can absolutely make this. So don't be intimidated. I'm gonna walk you through step by step. Lastly, um, as far as size goes, I'm usually a size small. And as you can tell, this is a pretty oversized sweater. There's plenty of room to grow in this sweater. And so I think this would fit all the way up to a size large. But if you wanted yours to be bigger, you would just add more squares to your front panels or more squares to your back panel, as you can see back here. Um, or if you know, you want your sleeves to be longer. I only have um, two down, or no, that's a lie. Yeah, I only have two squares down on my sleeves. You could do three. You can do whatever you want as you're making it if you think that you need to adjust it for your size. But I do think that this pattern will fit anywhere from size small to size large. So the first step is learning how to make the granny square. Now there are all kinds of different patterns and styles of granny squares. This one I think is commonly called a starburst granny square, but they are really, really fun once you get the hang of them and they are so cute. Every single time I make one and I'm picking new colors, I just, I love them so much. These granny squares are so inspiring to me because I can just use a big bunch of yarn that I'm not really doing much with that I honestly wouldn't normally put like colors like this together, but once I do it and I look at it in a granny square, they just look so cute. So I always love making them and I think that you'll love making them too. If you're a beginner, I definitely think that you can do this. Just be patient with yourself and you will definitely get the hang of it. So for supplies that you will need, they make all different kinds of yarn um, that works for granny squares. My favorite is to use a medium number four weight yarn and you can find that just on the back of any yarn brand, kind of roll it over and you'll see the size of the yarn, the recommended size of the crochet hook and different information like that. Now different brands recommend different size crochet hooks, even if the weight of the yarn is the same, which is very interesting. I use a size five millimeter crochet hook to make these granny squares, but like for instance, this, which is also a size four yarn, they recommend a six millimeter. And I have another ball of yarn in um, my collection that recommends 6.5 millimeters. So, I mean, if you are a beginner and you've never done it before, something that beginners struggle with is their tension. 
like how tightly they are making each stitch, which would mean that it would probably be smarter to start with a larger hook size. But if you've been doing this for a while, I mean, just use your judgment. I use a five millimeter and it works fine with this weight of yarn. Another thing that I wanna say is you want to make sure that you use the same weight of yarn for every single color that you're incorporating into each row of your granny square. For instance, if you had like a really thick yarn up here with like a thin yarn down here, it's gonna be inconsistent. And when you go to put these together, they're not gonna line up. They're not gonna be the same size. And so it's very important to keep the size of the yarn the same throughout the whole project. Another great thing about granny squares is you're only using a little bit of yarn per row. So a lot of times I save up all my scraps of yarn instead of throwing them out. If I've only got a little bit left after a project, I keep them in a little basket and that is what I pull from when it's time to make granny squares. Now, if you are wanting your shirt, now if you're wanting your project to be the same colors all throughout, absolutely do whatever you want. That's what's so fun about granny squares is you can customize this and make it whatever you want. The projects I've made in the past, I really haven't had a true rhyme or reason for my colors. Um, now this project, I am basing the colors off of my album artwork because I'm giving away this sweater for um, my album release that's coming out at the end of this month. So I'm going with more kind of goldy and um, greens and browns and peaches and just stuff like that. But you can use scraps of yarn, you can use brand new yarn that you buy. It's just, I just wanted to clarify that it really doesn't take that much yarn per row to get a granny square done. So you need your hook, you need a pair of scissors. I just use my Swiss Army knife, but you can use whatever you have. And then you need a good yarn needle. So to get started on our first round, I'll show you what it looks like. We're gonna, we're gonna start with making this center of our granny square, this little ring right here. So to begin, you're gonna wanna make a slip knot. If you've never done that before, you're just crossing the yarn over itself, just like that. Then I like to put my fingers through and pull up a loop. And that makes a slip knot. So you can just slip it right out. Okay? Just put the yarn over itself, reach through, and pull up a loop. Now you're going to insert your hook into your slip knot and you're gonna pull these two pieces right here to get that around the hook. I don't get it super tight, but you just want it to be pretty much pulled around your hook. Now this piece right here is your tail. You're not gonna do anything with it, except at the end we'll weave it in. This is your working yarn because it's connected to your ball of yarn. So what I like to do is kind of hold my tail out of the way and we are going to make a chain of four. So the only thing that you need to do to chain four is put the yarn over the hook and you're just gonna pull that through the loop. That's how we make our first chain right there. So we're gonna do that again. Yarn over the hook and pull through. Yarn over the hook, pull through. Yarn over the hook, pull through. And now we have got a chain of four. So to make our circle that we're gonna be working our project into, I just like to flip this over on its back and you have all of these little back bumps right here. And we're going to do a slip stitch into the first stitch that we made, okay? So we've made four, we're gonna go back to the first one and we're just going to insert our hook into that loop at the very beginning of our project and to make a slip stitch, you just put the yarn over the hook, you pull through one loop and you pull through the other. And then that joins them and that makes a little circle for us to work in. Okay, so once you have your circle done, you're going to chain three. So one, two, three. And now you're gonna start working double crochets into this ring right here. So we made this little ring and we're gonna work each double crochet into this ring. So I'll show you how we do that and just try to not get confused by this tail. We're gonna work right over it and it's not gonna be an issue at all, okay? So to make a double crochet, you're gonna put the yarn over the hook and you're gonna insert your hook into the center of that little ring that we've made. Now, 
you're going to take that same working yarn and you're going to pull up a loop just right through the middle of that loop. So you'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over your hook, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through two. And that is how you make one double crochet into this ring. We need 16 of these total, which if you're getting technical, this chain of three counts as one. So if you're counting each actual double crochet you worked, you'll need 15. But all in all at the end, you need 16 of these all the way around. So I'm gonna show you one more time. Put the yarn over the hook, insert into the ring, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Let's do that again. Yarn over, insert into your ring, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So what you're gonna do is continue this all the way around this little ring that we've made until we have 16 total. And as you can see, I've just kind of laid this tail that we have just right up against this ring that we're working into and we are just working right over that tail and we'll weave the rest of it in. Okay, so I'm gonna count and see how many we've done. So this is our chain three, it counts as one double crochet. So we're gonna say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, now it's time to join these two sides together. Some people work into the top chain of that chain three that you made at the beginning, but I think it just looks so much better if you work right into this space right next to it. So we're gonna insert our hook into that top chain space, and we're gonna work a slip stitch, which remember we just pull the yarn through and pull the yarn through. And that is how you join your work. Now, to tie it off, we're gonna act like we're making a chain of one, just pull through a loop, cut your yarn, and then pull that through, and that ties everything off. And that is how you make the first round of your granny square. Now it is completely up to you whether you want to weave in your ends when you're done with the granny square and weave them all in at one time or weave them in as you go. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how to weave them in so that you'll know as you make your granny square. So using your yarn needle, just put that tail through the needle. And I like to work backwards in the direction it's going. So this tail is obviously coming this way because it's poking out of this yarn. And I just push my needle through on the back side of my project. And I just pull that yarn through. And then I'll go back the same way I came and do it again. And that just makes sure that your ends are really good and woven in so that they're not going to come out and your square will never unravel. So we're going to do that one more time. And once again, make sure you are doing this not on the front side of your project, but on the back. And since this is coming through the top, I just work down and then through the center down here. I'm gonna work back over and then we'll go through one more time. Cut your yarn and there you go. So you have your first round done for your granny square. So now we are gonna move on to my favorite round which is actually these little puppy stitches. I don't know why they're my favorite, but I just think they're the cutest. I love looking at them. So I'm gonna go in with a new color and joining a new color is not as complicated as you might think it will be. Here's some things that you need to make sure that you have in mind before you start. Make sure you are working on the right side of your project and not the back side. I think it's very obvious which side is right and which side is wrong. This one does not look as neat and clean as this one. So this is the right side and you have all these little chains right here that you can see. Pick any of them, it doesn't matter which one, and insert your hook underneath one of those chains. Get your new color of yarn and I just lay it over my hook, just like this. I don't tie it or anything. Just lay it over the hook 
and I pull through. Now if you want, and maybe if this is easier for beginners, what you can do is literally tie a knot and attach your yarn to that chain space. You don't have to do that. Usually I don't do that. I just work it and then weave this in at the end. But if it's easier, you can go ahead and tie it on. So once you have your new yarn color attached, you're gonna insert your hook into that same chain space that you tied the knot in, okay? So we're working into the same space. You've got your tail right here that we're just gonna work over. Don't even pay it any attention. And then you've got your working yarn that you're gonna work from. So first thing we need to do is pull up a loop, which how we do that, we're taking our working yarn and we're just pulling it through that chain space. So now we've got a loop right here that we're working with. So we're gonna put the yarn over the hook and we're gonna chain three. So there's one, two, and three, just like we did before. Now, for this round, we're gonna work multiple times into the same space. So, what that means is we'll put the yarn over the hook and we'll insert into that exact same space. We're gonna pull the yarn through that chain space and we're gonna pull up a loop. And I kinda like pull at it, as you could tell. Um, I don't keep it really close and tight to the chain. So we're gonna do that again, yarn over the hook, insert into the exact same space, pull up a loop. See how I just pull that yarn up and through. And what we're wanting is to have seven loops on our hook. So right now we have five, so we're gonna do it one more time. Yarn over the hook, insert, pull up a loop. And now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loops. Yarn over the hook and you're gonna pull through all seven loops and then you're going to chain one just like that so that's how you make your first puff stitch now we're going to do that again yarn over and we're going to go into the next chain space insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop and that's seven and that's how you make your puff stitch. I'm gonna just pull that tail out of the way. So I'll show you one more time. Put the yarn over the hook, insert into the chain space, and pull up a loop. And you're gonna do that a total of three times. And that gives you seven loops on your hook. You're gonna pull through all seven, and then chain one. So continue working this all the way around this circle and you should, if you've done it right, have 16 little puff stitches. Okay, so once you've made it to your final chain, we'll work that last one together. I'll show you how to count these. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We need 16 total. We have one chain space left. So once again, put the yarn over the hook, insert into the space, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through all seven loops, and then chain one. So now it's time to join these, and once again, we're gonna work into this top stitch right here. And we're gonna work a slip stitch, so just pull that yarn through and pull that yarn through. Pull through a loop, cut your work, Pull it tight and you have got your second round of your granny square done. Now it's time for our third row and this time instead of working into the chain spaces that we see up here, we're actually going to be working in between each of these little puffs. So we're sliding our hook not really into a chain space, like you're not going to slide your hook up here. You're sliding them just in between each of these puffs. So we're gonna attach our new color. And once again, you can start anywhere you want to on your circle. And we're going to pull up a loop. We're going to chain three again. And for this round, it's kind of like an adjustment to a double crochet stitch. It starts the same as a double crochet, but once again, we're gonna be working into the same space multiple times. And that's what gives us these little kind of 
puffs and these are more like teardrop shape and they're really cute too so what you're going to do is put the yarn over the hook insert back into that same space pull up a loop so you've got three loops just like you do on your double crochet stitch you're going to pull through two but instead of finishing that double crochet we're just going to do that same thing again so yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop pull through two we're gonna do that one more time yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop and pull through two until you have four loops on your hook when you have four loops on your hook you're gonna yarn over pull through all four and then you're gonna chain two this time instead of just one so let's do that again working into that next space yarn over the hook insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over insert the hook pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over insert the hook pull up a loop yarn over pull through two there's four loops on your hook yarn over pull through all four and chain two so you'll just continue this until you make it around to the end and I'll meet you back there okay we've made it to our last space right here in between these two puffs so we're gonna work that same stitch again pull through all four chain two and then we're just gonna work into that top stitch and work a slip stitch make a chain pull up a loop and then cut your yarn and pull through and that is how you make the third round of your granny square we've made it to our fourth and final round of our granny square and this is when it actually becomes a square because you may have been thinking this whole time we're making a square but this is a circle <laughs> So this is when it actually becomes a square. And I don't want you to get overwhelmed if you've never crocheted before and you're like, how am I gonna remember all these different patterns for each round? I promise the more you do it, it becomes like muscle memory. You just memorize the pattern the way you would memorize anything in life and um, you just make it without even thinking. So don't be overwhelmed. Just go easy on yourself if you are a beginner. But with all that being said, let's go ahead and finish our square. So this time, once again, we're working in the spaces between these little shapes that we've made. I don't really know. They kind of look like little acorns right now. So we're going to just pick a spot, insert our hook, pull our new color through, and tie it on. So to make a square, we're basically going to have to make stitches that progressively get smaller and then back to bigger if that makes any sense so we're going to do a triple crochet double crochet half double crochet double crochet triple crochet this time when we go to make our chain for this row we're actually going to chain four all the other times we've chained three but this time we're going to chain four because that counts as one triple crochet so in the double crochet we put our yarn over our hook once and then inserted our hook into the space. This time we're gonna put our yarn over our hook twice. Insert the hook into the space, pull up a loop. You're gonna pull through the first two, then you, that leaves you with three, pull through two more, and that leaves you with two, and then pull through those two. And that's your first triple crochet. That chain of four counts as one, there's two, so we're gonna work three total. So put the yarn over the hook twice. Let me get this out of the way. I'll show you that one more time. Yarn over the hook twice, insert into the space, pull up a loop. You'll have four loops on your hook. Put the yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. So we have three triple crochet. Now we're gonna go directly into this next space. And then we're gonna work three double crochet into this space. So yarn over the hook, insert, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. Do that again. And then a third time. 
So we have three triple crochet in this one, three double crochet in this one. Now we're gonna go to half double crochet. So we haven't worked that stitch yet, but it is the easiest of them all. You put the yarn over the hook, insert, pull up a loop, just like you do with the others. But this time, instead of pulling through the first two, then pulling through again, you're just gonna put the yarn over and pull through all three. So I'll show you again, put the yarn over the hook, insert into the space, pull up a loop, and pull through all three. And we worked three of those as well. So we've done triple, double, half. Now we're gonna go back up to double, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. And you're always going to work three into each space. Okay, and now we need to go back and work a triple. So yarn over twice, insert your hook, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. All right, so we have triple, double, half, double, triple. And see, it forms this straight line, even though this is a circle, it's helping us build our straight edges of our square. But now it's time to turn a corner. You see right here in between these two sets of triple crochet, we have this corner space. So all you have to do to make a corner is chain three. One, two, three. And then you're gonna work another set of triple crochets into this same space. So. Yarn over the hook twice, insert into the same space that you just worked those three triple crochets in and you're gonna work another set of three. But it has that chain of three in the middle and that's what is giving us the corner of our square. So just like that, you can see we went from a straight edge and now we've turned the corner. So you worked your triple crochet into the same space as this triple crochet with your chain of three in between. So after triple crochet comes double crochet. So work three double crochet into that next space. And then remember after double comes half double crochet. And that's where we pull through all three Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, pull through all three. After half, we go back up to double, pull through two, pull through two. And then after double, it's time to go back to triple. So pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. All right, now we're turning a corner again, so chain three, and then work three more triple crochet into the same space. Once that's done, we go back to double crochet And then after double, we go back to half. And then back up to double. And then back to triple. Chain three to turn our corner, and then work three more triple crochet into the same space. All right, so 
as you can see, we have almost finished our square. So we just turned a corner right here and worked another set of triple crochets. So now we're gonna work a set of double crochets. And after double comes half double. And after half double, we go back up to double. And then after that set is done, we've made it back to our first set of triple crochets. So what we need to do is work another set of triple crochets, chain three and attach. So go into that same space that you started in, work three triple crochets, And then we're gonna chain three to do our last corner and work a slip stitch right into that top chain. Pull through, pull through a loop, cut your yarn and tie it off. And that is how you make this starburst granny square. So once you have all of your squares done, it's time to start assembling your sweater. I really love how the colors turned out in all these squares. You need a total of 39 squares to make a sweater that I think will fit anyone from a small all the way to a large. But if you start making this for yourself and you feel like you need the panels to be a little bit bigger to make a bigger size, absolutely go for it. But once again, I'm gonna show you, get these moved out of the way, what the layout of this sweater is gonna look like. So, this was my first sweater, and if you look really closely, you see a ton of mess ups on it. Um, some of my ends are coming out up here because this is the back of a square. Same with this down here. I've had this for a long time. I've worn it a ton and I've learned a lot since my first time. So I'm excited to make this new one because it's gonna be even more secure and beautiful than this one. But what I'm going to do to sew these together is I'm going to use a slip stitch, crochet stitch to join these squares. So as you can see, the front two panels are made of six squares each. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So what we need to do to make our first front panel is join six squares together. And we're gonna join them all the way down this way. And then we'll go back through and join them this way. And then for my yarn that I'm going to be joining them with and doing the ribbing and all that, I'm gonna use this really pretty kind of off-white beige color instead of a stark white. I just think this is gonna complement these tones and these colors better than stark white. Now there are all kinds of ways to join granny squares together. And we're gonna be using the slip stitch join. And you do this with your crochet hook. It adds the cutest little detail. It's almost like a braided look to attach your squares together. You don't use a yarn needle. You just basically crochet them together with your crochet hook by using a slip stitch. So you're gonna start by selecting your squares and then get getting all six of them out of the way and just start with the bottom two. I made a slip knot in my working yarn and now you're gonna insert your crochet hook into the outside loop of your chain, which are those V spaces that we made. So you're starting at the base of the squares, insert into the outside loop only of the bottom chain on one side of the squares. You're gonna add your slip knot onto your hook and you're gonna pull that slip knot through those outside loops. Okay, so now your yarn is attached to your two squares and you're gonna keep your yarn underneath the two squares as you work. So we're gonna do that again, just going into the direct next chain space and you're working in the outside loop only. So not under both parts of that V space, but only the outer loop. 
you're going to put both of the loops from both squares on the hook and then yarn over and pull through and it makes a slip stitch. So you can see again, outside loop, outside loop, and then pull that yarn through to make a slip stitch. So you just continue this all the way down this side of your granny squares and then we will add on the next two squares and then the next two squares until we have a panel that is two across and three down, six squares total. So you're just working into that outside loop of your chain space on each square to join them together with a slip stitch. So outside loop, outside loop, and then pull the yarn through to make a slip stitch. Once you've made it to the end of the row, you have this beautiful chain joining your two squares together. So just grab your next two squares and you don't have to do anything fancy to join them together. You're just gonna continue what you're doing. So starting at the base, you're working into the outside loops of the chain space, yarn over, pull through, and work your slip stitch. And as you can see here, sometimes these get a little bit tight. It's okay to manhandle the yarn. <laughs> That's something that it took me a long time to learn. Sometimes you have to pinch it with your fingers and pull up a loop to be able to work the yarn through the chain spaces. That's okay, do whatever you gotta do. So. You're just gonna continue this same process working in the outside loops of those chain spaces, keeping that yarn through the center, kind of underneath that working yarn that you're using to make the slip stitch, and then just pulling that yarn through to make a slip stitch. And just continue that. And then you'll add your next two granny squares the same way that you did these. So once you've made it to the end and you have this whole row of your granny squares done, go ahead and just like pull up a loop like we've done in the past and you're gonna turn it on its side because now we have to sew them together this way. So you have to do this kind of in a process. Um, you work down one side, or at least this is the way I do it, down one side and then you come across and work down the other. So you're gonna do this the same way. I made a little slip knot with my yarn. I am putting my crochet hook into the outside loops of my chain spaces, putting that yarn on, and I'm going to pull it through and start working down this way. So once you make it to your seam, you're gonna work all the way up to the base of that seam that you just worked. And you might think that this would be a hard part, but it's really not difficult at all. You're literally just going to work the next stitch right over top of that original seam you made. So this stitch will just lay right over top and intersect that original stitch you, that you made. And mine looks a little crooked right here, but it is not crooked. You just pull it out and straighten it out when you're done um, and it all comes out adorable. So you just work right over that seam with another slip stitch and continue working into the outside loops of your chain spaces until you have your whole panel sewn together. Okay, so we have the two front panels of our sweater done. And the join that we're using, it is a flat slip stitch join. It seems very complicated, but I promise if you work with the yarn kind of coming from away from you. And then same when you turn and do it this way, that helps you keep it underneath the two seams. Um, it's intimidating at first when you see it, and I know it's hard to see even in the video, but you will absolutely get the hang of it. So now I'm going to make our back panel. So the back panel is the largest piece that you make because it consists of 15 squares. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew this way first and then we'll go down the short sides. So that being said, I'm gonna move these out of the way. I'm just gonna do them like this, move them off to the side and we're going to turn this this way. And we will start working with, let's see, 
go here like this. And then make sure your squares are always facing right side up. And then you're going to find this middle chain in our chain of three, one, two, three. You're going to insert your hook into the outside of that stitch. Same on this side, insert into the outside of that same middle chain in our chain of three. Take your slip knot and you're going to pull that through those two. So let's get our tail out of the way so we're not worried about that. And then you just need to pull up and kind of see where the next one is, which is right here. You're going to insert your hook into that space. Come over here, find the other one, insert into that one. And see, this is coming from this direction, so it's automatically under these squares. You're going to yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. And sometimes these can get a little bit tight when you're working in just the chain spaces and not the actual stitch. But now that we're in the stitches, it gets a little bit easier. And as you can see, you just work down the project. With this yarn in between and underneath your squares. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that I made this clear. The best way for you to sew this wide back panel together is to sew this whole side and then sew this whole side. So then that way when you do these, it will be finished. So we've got one seam done here. We're gonna do this seam and then we'll turn it on its side and go this way. This is what that back panel will look like when it's finished. And then you've got that panel done and your two front panels done. All right, we've had a seam change. I'm now finishing this up in my office, but hopefully y'all can still see just as good in my office. But I'm finishing up one of the sleeve panels right now. And so technically those panels that are two across and three down, you'll need four of those panels total. Two of those you'll use for the front panels and two you'll use for the sleeves. And the sleeves you'll join together to make a cylinder shape for your arm to go through. I'll show you how to do that next. All right, and then all you do when it's time to make your sleeves, I'm gonna go ahead and do this so that they're ready to be attached, is you're just going to fold. This is what the back side looks like. This is what the front side looks like. You're gonna fold this in half and you're gonna sew it down this way. So right here we have where we ended our row and right now it's just a loop. But what I'm going to do is pull through that loop and make a knot so that that's good and secure and then we'll weave it in later. And then we're going to take our yarn and do the exact same thing we've been doing except now we're going to do it sewing these together. So do both of these for whichever pieces you want your sleeves to be and then we'll get to assembling the rest of the sweater. Okay, so you can see what we are doing now. Let me flip this up. This is our back panel of 15 squares. I have it turned front side down. Now to sew on your front panels, you're going to put front side up so that the insides are facing each other because that's how it would be when you would wear it. And you start by just sewing them together at the top, the same way we've done everything so far. So when you go to do that, just line up your panels and see which you know squares you want where. You can flip it all different kinds of ways until you get it how you like it. And then when that's done, I just turn my work and I sew this the same way we've sewn everything this whole time with these getting sewn together at the top and our yarn going down this way. So I went ahead and got this sleeve finished and the cuff made. So now I'm gonna show you how to attach your sleeves. Basically you sew with the same seam we've been doing all the way up to about halfway on this square. So I'm going to do just a few more stitches because I don't think I'm quite where I need to be yet. 
Okay, I wanna take a moment to pause here to make sure this is clear. I am sewing the front panel, the edge of the front panel to the edge of the back panel to join the sides of the sweater together. I just wanted to make sure that was clear. So we sewed the top of the front panel and the top of the back panel. Now we're sewing up the side. And then all you do to attach this, so all you're gonna do is start treating this like this. So we're gonna go into the bottom stitch Come around the front and go into this side and then work a slip stitch and then we'll just continue so we'll go into this next chain space right here come over here or maybe that's what it is and then come through here there we go and you're just going to work all the way through here And just remember you're working into one side of this sleeve. So we're attaching the sleeve to this opening right here, and then we'll go around the back side. But it's the same technique that we've used the whole time. You're just using the technique to add a new piece of your garment. Then just a little tip, these are some of our ends that we haven't woven in yet. I'm just gonna tie those in a knot to give us just some extra security and we'll weave them in later, but we're gonna treat this the same way we treated the other spots when we were going over an area, over a stitch. We're just gonna work right over it with this at the bottom and then pull through and work our slip stitch. And that'll give us a stitch right up the center. So just continue that same slip stitch join down one side of the sleeve and then flip the sweater over to the back and work down the back side of the sleeve and the back side of the sweater. Once you make it to the end, You've worked the sleeve all the way around the sweater. You're just going to pull a loop through the way we've done the whole time. Cut your yarn and pull a knot. So, let's get this to where it's turned the right way. So now we have our sleeve tied on. Now it's time to make our little cup. I think these add so much to the sweater and it's definitely worth the time to add them. All you have to do to make this cuff, move this out of the way, is you're going to work basically like a, a ribbing border stitch, I think is a good way to describe it. So make a slip knot and you're gonna make a chain of 10. Four, five, six, seven, You can make this as long or as short as you would like. I kind of, I didn't remember what I did last time, so I kind of laid it against my sweater to see what I did, but you can make this shorter, you can make it longer, you can do whatever you want to, it's very customizable. So what we're gonna do first is work a single crochet starting in the second chain from the hook all the way down. So we're gonna turn our work and we're gonna work in these back bumps. So here's our first one. So we're gonna work in the second from the hook, insert our hook, Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's how you work a single crochet. Insert your hook into the next one, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So you'll work this all the way down you get to the last stitch so now since we skipped the first one we'll technically be working into nine spaces so once you get to the bottom you're going to chain one and you're going to flip your work now if you turn it you see these little v spaces right here 
we're going to be working into the back loop. Okay, so here's our new chain space that we made. So starting right here, we should have nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're going to work into not under both loops, but into only this back loop. Okay, so insert your hook, put the yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull through two. And then continue working single crochets just into those back loops all the way down your project. And that is what is going to give us kind of that ribbing effect to finish out our sweater. So work all the way down. So we made it to our last one. Insert, yarn over, pull through two. And now we're going to chain one again and turn our work again and just continue that. So there's our chain one. Here's our first stitch we're working into, just the back loop only. Insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Just working into those back loops only. So we are on our third row and I think we need to do 27 rows to give us the cuff size that I desire. Um, and literally how I gauge what to make my cup size. As I make this, I lay it across my wrist and fold it until it's about the size that I want it to be. But you can already see right here how that kind of gives us a ridge right here. But if you just continue working that, you can make yours whatever size you want, but I'm going to do 27 rows. Okay, so I just did my 27 rows, and as you can tell, this has quite a bit of stretch to it. So, no matter if you make it like really tight or loose, it's still going to give you this poofy effect, as you can see on this one, because we're adding a smaller piece of fabric to a larger piece of fabric, so it gives us that kind of poof that I think is really cute. But since I'm not making this for myself, I want to be sure that it fits everyone and I have absolute baby wrists. My wrists are so small. Um, so I don't want to make it too tight that it's uncomfortable for someone else to wear. So that's why I went with 27. But as you can tell, I'm just measuring by folding it around until it's the desired size that I want. And I went with 27. So now, once you're done with that, you're going to just pull through like you're making a chain, cut your yarn, and then pull a knot. So now what we need to do is take our yarn needle and we are going to sew, I think that's enough yarn. I think it is. We're gonna sew these ends together. And how we're gonna do that is we're going to work into these back loops with our yarn needle. You just insert into the back loop, insert into the back loop, all the way down the cuff. So once you've made it to the top, this is going to be the inside of our cuff. And this right here is going to be the outside of our cuff because I think that that gives a much more finished look than the other side. So what we're going to do is take that yarn. We're going to insert it. And if you think about this beforehand, make your tail longer so you're not working with a tiny piece of yarn like this. But we're going to pull a loop and then we're going to take that yarn, push it through that loop so that we can tie a knot so that it's secure. 
And then, since we're working with a small piece, still working in the back of the project, I'm just gonna push that yarn needle through there and thread this with my yarn. And we're just gonna pull that tail right down into that cuff. And that way it's nice and secure. So now, still with the cuff inside out, we're gonna turn our sweater sleeve inside out. Just like that. And we're going to sew this. And I'm actually gonna use, I think I'm gonna use this piece right here because it's a lot longer. I'm just gonna tie this cuff to this up here. But if you made your tail longer, you don't have to do this. But I have all these tails sticking out of my project. So I'm just going to use one of those. But using a new piece of yarn or one of your tails, all you're gonna do to crochet this to your sleeve is you are going to insert your yarn and then you're going to skip multiple stitches like we're going to go all the way down here whereas normally when we're crocheting we wouldn't skip stitches like that we would just go in line but we've got all of this fabric that needs to be added to this small little cuff in order to make that happen we have to skip stitches so that it bunches it up and we're going to go back to that original stitch and then working in that same stitch we're going to go back down the project and back into that original stitch and that is how we're going to sew our piece together. So skip stitches and come back. Skip stitches, come back. Skip stitches. So you're never really skipping stitches on this piece, but you're always skipping stitches up here. I hope that makes sense. But that's what gives us that nice puffy look for our sleeve. So continue to just sew this together all the way around your project, making sure to pull it tight as you go. sewing this on. And the reason we do this inside out is so that way our ugly seams are on the inside of our project and it looks much neater and cleaner when we turn it right side out. Okay, so before we move any further, this might be a little bit out of order, but I wanna show you how to weave in all these ends. I've done the whole sweater. Now I just have this last one, and I wanna show you how to, I do it. So you always wanna make sure that you're weaving in the ends on the underside, the inside of your project, and not the outside of your project. So as you can see right here, this is what the outside looks like. Just flip it inside out and put your ends on a yarn needle. And what I do is I just like to weave them in. You could go this way, you could go this way, but just along a line. And we'll do this one to show you. So I'll even, there's all kinds of nooks and crannies in this yarn. So you can even stick your finger in there so that you can have better stability. But I just kind of weave it back and forth down this line of stitches like that and pull the yarn through. And then I'll go back up. And pull the yarn through. And then I'll go back down the same line. Like 
And this is just gonna make sure that that yarn is nice and secure and it's never gonna come unraveled. And then I just cut it and I leave a little bit of a straggler because as a person wears it and it stretches out, you'll see it'll move a little bit. But that is how you weave your ends in. And then we'll flip it right side out. And I wanna show y'all this bottom piece down here and how beautiful it turned out. In an effort to try and keep this video from being too horribly long, I did this bottom border off camera, but I'm about to show you how I do the inside and final border piece. So you'll get to see how I do this again. But this stitch is the exact same that we did for the cuff. It is the same pattern um, for this bottom border and for the final inside border piece. So for this bottom part, we did another chain of 10 the same way we did for the cuff. And I don't know exactly how many rows I did because I just measured it out by laying it against the sweater. So I wanted the bottom of this border piece to line up exactly with the side of the sweater. So you can see from that brown square right there, the border on the bottom just lines up exactly at the end of that brown square. And so I just crocheted until I could lay it at the base of that brown square, wrap it around the back, and then around the other side of the sweater, and then I sewed it on with my yarn needle and a long strand of yarn. But you'll see how I do it again um, with this final inside border piece. I just put a slip knot on my hook, and I'm gonna chain five. that's thick enough. I think it may be. I might do six that way it's the length of five because we skip a stitch. So I'm going to do six and you just insert into those back bumps to get you started and work a single crochet all the way down this chain. chain one and turn, and then working into the back bumps only, work a single crochet into each back bump. And just continue that, and I think that's gonna be perfect. All right, so that took about 30 minutes for anybody who's curious how long it takes to do some of this stuff. And basically, this is how I've always done it. I just lay it out against where we're gonna sew it on. And see, I've actually done more than we need. So when that happens, just pull some of your rows out and try again until it lines up how you want it to. And I think that is going to be perfect. So when you get done, you make your little knot and I'm actually gonna pull quite a bit of a tail because I'm gonna use this to sew the project onto the sweater. There we go. So we're going to pull that so that we have a little knot that's good and secure. And I'll just lay this out how I want it. And then what we're going to do is take our yarn needle. And we are literally just going to attach this onto the sweater. And what I'm gonna do is turn this inside out so that it looks nice when we're done. So 
Let's move this over. And then we're just going to attach it. So I don't use any special technique here. I literally just work the yarn needle through this new, ooh, spinning scissors around here. All right, work the yarn needle through both sides of ah, both the sweater and this new border piece that we made. I'm going too fast, y'all. Making a mess. Let's see. Just to make sure it's good and secure. And the fun thing is, as soon as this is done, we are officially done with our sweater. These crochet projects do take quite a bit of time, but if you're not in a like rush with it, and you're more just making them leisurely as you watch TV at night, or um, I love to listen to the Bible on the Bible app. I never knew that you could do that until here recently. I didn't know that the Bible app would like read to you like a podcast does or anything like that. And so I used to listen to a bunch of podcasts and um, have that going as I clean the house or as I crocheted. But now I'll wake up in the morning and the mornings that I have time, I can listen to the Bible and crochet or like I said, watching TV or watching a movie and doing it, it's just something that you can kind of do as you have time and as you're relaxing. And so that's why it never really feels like work to me um, when I'm working on these projects. The only time that it does feel kind of crazy is if you are trying to get it done like in a certain amount of time. But just continue sewing this. Like I said, I'm just kind of working through both sides of both the sweater And this new border piece and pulling it tight and see that's giving us a beautiful edge right here okay I feel like we have to weave this last end in together since we've done this whole project together I want to thank you so much for watching I really hope that this has been inspiring to you and that you decide to give crochet a try if you haven't yet or if you do crochet but you've never made anything that you can wear you absolutely should because it is so much fun to be able to wear your projects and especially ones like this that are so unique. I mean, unless you sit down to make it all uniform, no one will ever have another sweater quite like this one. All right, let's flip it right side out. And there we have it, our little cardigan.